Hey everybody, welcome back to The Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes and I realized when I was planning episode ideas for today that I have not done anything in a long time on specific photographers. Uh, we kind of went through a phase a while back where we you know, dedicated an entire episode to somebody's work. And generally I pick people that people should be familiar with, um, perhaps somebody you haven't heard, and I think this is a really good one today. And I'm going to apologize uh, because I'm really bad at pronouncing names sometimes and I'm really not sure how to pronounce this guy's name. So if somebody knows um, that speaks Japanese, feel free to correct me in the comments if I am indeed wrong. But uh, I'm going to talk about a photographer who I believe he pronounces his name Sohi Nishino or Nishino or something of that variety. Uh, again, I know I sound like an idiot, but um, you know that's just how it is. But I want you to be familiar with this guy's work. Um, the kind of depressing part of it all is this guy's like in his early 30s and he's making just incredible groundbreaking work. And I think he's somebody everybody needs to be familiar with because I think he's contemporary. Um, he embodies tradition in his work and it's just, it's mind blowing what he does. Um, I became familiar with uh, Nishino's work and. I, again, I'm blowing the pronunciation, but this was uh, last summer I was in New York uh, working on the Jim Hodges project and had a free day and decided I would go visit the ICP or the International Center of Photography, which I had never been to. If you haven't ever been there, this is a must visit. It is a photography museum. The downside is it's in the middle of Times Square, so it's usually really crowded down there and kind of absolutely miserable to get to sometimes, but they really do things first class there. And, you know, as somebody who works in a museum, sometimes when places do their summer shows, uh, they tend to, and it just depends on the museum, but sometimes, or a lot of times, they are usually collection based and not as thought through sometimes as, you know, an actual exhibition. And this one I was actually very impressed with. Um, they covered a bunch of younger photographers who, that they felt really were doing groundbreaking work today. And there were several people, um, you know, and I can cover some of the others in other episodes but I want to talk about Sohi's work today. Um, what Sohi does is a series of what he calls dioramas. And so I'm going to show you what these look like in a second, but they're amazing. So what he does is, is he combines elements of photography in with illustration and he does these city portraits. And he's done just about every major city. Um, the, the two that were there were Tokyo, New York, and I believe London may have been there as well. And so what he'll do is he'll sketch out kind of a map on a piece of paper. And I'll show you how this works in a second. He will take a 35 millimeter camera loaded with black and white film and basically visit the city he's doing this diorama of and he'll spend a month taking pictures of every street from every angle and just as much as he can possibly focus on. It is a little bit random, it's a little bit disjunct, but you're going to see where this is going in a second. Then what he does is he goes into the dark room and prints contact sheets of the film that he's taken and usually ends up, I think the number I saw was about 10,000 images. Cuts them all out, so they're all little squares of different you know, proportions, there's a little bit of a hand nature to this. And what he does is he actually puts them up on the board uh, and illustrates in this diorama uh, the city that's being done. And I, I think it's easier to show you than it is to sit here and try and describe it. But uh, come on over to the computer and uh, let's take a look. Okay, so we are on Mr. Nishino's website right now, and I will put links to all the sites that we're going to look at here and all the examples of work in the show notes so you guys can um, actually go see for yourself. But anyway, I want to show you what these dioramas are. And if you go to his website, and I'm at the top under Diorama Map, I'm going to go ahead and click New York so we can go look at his Diorama of New York. Now, I know these are not as detailed as they sh probably should be for this video uh, because we have the technical limitations. I will show you how big these are in size, but... You know, what this is, is you can really start to make out Manhattan here, New York City. Um, you know, the way the two rivers come around and you have this kind of interesting Empire State Building in the middle. And then up here at the top, you can definitely make out Central Park. And what's really interesting is there is really kind of, I'm sure you can see at this angle at least, a whimsical, you know, kind of quality to these. Um, and literally, they are made up of thousands of little tiny contact sheets that are cut out and assembled into this massive of detailed diorama map, in this case of New York City. Um, what's interesting is the way that there is room. It's not a little, literal interpretation. There's a lot of room for, you know, uh, just kind of artistic suggestion, like things like with the water and then in the back, even with the sky, uh, the way Central Park is pieced together. But there also is enough accuracy to where you do 
definitely define this as New York. It's almost kind of, I, I don't like the word cartoon because that really, really cheapens, I think, what he's doing here. But they're, they're you know, whimsical. It's, it's kind of a, you know, playful, illustrative, uh, bizarre kind of quality to these that I think is, you know, really amazing. And even just the little details, like way back up here, if you look at the top at the skyline of which you see beyond Manhattan and the way that the whole image on a large scale really tilts towards you. I think, I think it's just genius. And he has these for tons and tons of major cities in here. Uh, Rio de Janeiro um, is pretty amazing too, where you can see how Rio de Janeiro works. And then also mixed in with the, um, with the statue of Christ that sits up the top very famously overlooking the water. Um, so anyway, amazing stuff. And you can go here and there's tons of cities in here. Um, here's a little bit bigger one that you can see. This is the New York one. Yeah, I guess they didn't get that much bigger, but it's just a slightly more detailed image. Again, I'll link all this stuff up in the show notes so you guys can see it. Um, here's one of London that I think is particularly interesting and in how you see how the River Thames flows through. You have the eye, um, you know, major landmarks. And, and some of these, I mean, they get pretty messy. They've got a lot going on in here and a lot of details, but they're extremely interesting. And, you know, I think the result of these, I mean, it's probably obvious, but I think one thing that makes them particularly attractive to me, especially when I saw them at the ICP last summer, was, you know, you get kind of a different take when you stand up close to it and you're inspecting on a very macro level. You see the photographs more um, and you see that they're actually really interesting and actually really cool in these wonderful black and white shots of various things in the city. And they, on their own, they're good photographs. When you pull back away from these, it takes a different form and it has kind of this loose kind of illustrated, um, you know, the, the whimsy comes in, you know, and that's, that's, it, it's just really, really neat. And I think these are just so different. Um, another link I will share with you, this is from the Telegraph, which is a UK news news um, outlet and they had a video that they ran on here and I'll kind of roll this and show it to you but this is uh, this is actually um, Nishino making one of these and you can see you know this becomes a time lapse but he sits here with a bunch of music on here come the contact sheets and he draws out the city he's working on and this is London in this case sorry I've got the volume on there's some music behind on this and what he does is goes through and you can start to see that that he indeed starts putting the contacts and pasting them in. And as the video speeds up, you see all the clothes changes. You can see how many days. And I love the zooming in on here, too. Um, a considerable amount of time goes into making something like this and extreme amount of patience. And you think also, you know, how long does it take to make a photograph sometimes? But to make something like this that really does become a piece of art. You know, I mean, we're talking, you know, he, he spends a month just taking the images. So, I mean, some of these can take a long time to do, but they're extremely interesting. Also, probably, I don't think what this video communicates is keeping track of what's what. I mean, you're dealing with so many images of a city and, you know, hey, where did that other shot of the London Eye go? I mean, the amount of organization that goes into uh, to making one of these things is absolutely amazing. Anyway, this guy, like I said, he's like 31 or something crazy and, and just doing something that I find completely incredible at a very young age. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's just it's amazing here. Here's some other collage maps. This is from a website called BeautifulDecay.com, which just is a blog that happened to run a story. And you can see in here some close ups in on some of these, which I think is really cool. So you can kind of see how the contact sheets. I mean, a lot of them, you know, you'll have a building that is comprised of probably 20 images right there. And, you know, how they all kind of fit together in a certain way. And I, I can't even imagine the amount of experimentation that goes into something like this. There's some other things with these guys in hats. and Anyway, I, I just think this guy's wonderful. Anyway, I hope that, you know, go look this up on your own. And if you get a chance to see something like this in person, uh, it's well worth it. Uh, I will end with this. If you go back over to Nishino's website here under the archive section, he's got some shots of installations. So, for instance, this was done in the ICP terminal. This was what I saw. And uh, it wasn't in this room, but this is where, where I saw these. And you can see how big they are when they're done. I mean, they're, they're made up of contact sheets. And if you remember the old 35 millimeter days, it's the size of a piece of 35 millimeter film. So you can kind of scroll through these and get an idea of scale for how these work in an art gallery type situation. And they're, plus they're just beautiful photos. I think, I think there's some amazing stuff going on in here. Um, there's a particularly large installation that he did that was outdoors and printed and enlarged onto the floor or onto the ground. 
uh, people could actually walk on, which is kind of neat. Anyway, th- th- it's a very accessible subject that I think reaches a lot of people. It's not so high art that it leaves anybody out. I mean, it's something kids would get into, so on and so forth. So anyway, um, that's Soshi, Sohi, sorry, I can't pronounce anything today, Sohi Nishino. Okay, so that is the work of Sohi Nishino, and uh, I will put links in the show notes to all the websites I talked about today. Um, you know, like a lot of really good artists, or in this case, I know I, I, he's a photographer, but I'd clearly say this is an art bent kind of thing that he's doing. Um, their stuff does not reproduce well sometimes online, and that's unfortunate. It's really meant to be experienced. It's really meant to be up close to. So if you ever get a chance to see this work, or even better, if you can find it printed in a book or publication or something like that, to be able to really get up close and see these better than, you know, in this case, a video or online, even on the website, that's the only complaint I have is that I think his website really doesn't give you enough detail to show that work the way it needs to be displayed. Like I said, these things are fairly large. But my point is, is that he's doing something that's just pushing things creatively beyond just taking pictures. It would be really easy just to be a street photographer and go out and take street shots and that's it. And I'm not slamming that because obviously there are a long history of photographers who have done this very well. But what I really appreciate that Nishino does, or Nishino, I really wish I knew how to pronounce it. Somebody please correct me. Uh, But anyway, one thing I really like that he's doing is, you know, taking basically contact sheets of stuff he's making and then comprising them on something that has a larger value in the end. And he's basically taking it in a creative way to the next level and doing something that's, you know, very different and very interesting all at the same time. So anyway, we will revisit this more as we go along. Um, I know we've done a lot on websites lately and I will be the first to admit that the episodes that I do Um, tend to reflect things that I'm working on at the time and I am working on redoing my website this fall and I think this is actually important so if you were hanging on and waiting for another web episode um, we will we will come back to that don't worry but I think sometimes when you do something like you're redeveloping your website or you're redesigning or you know it's kind of this it's this way of doing something new that, that I think is important because it's, it's more than just a framework that you're going to present work within. Uh, for me, it's redefining, and I'm kind of at a point with my work where I want to start doing something new in a new direction. So it's really kind of a point of redefining what that is that I do. So, you know, I hope that you guys look at something like this episode. Um, with a photographer who's exceptionally different or something, whether you like it or not, but take some inspiration from that because I think it's really important. I mean, a website is a website. They're a million, billion, whatever on the web, uh, you know, to do one to make it stand out. But I mean, what it is, is it's more than just putting up a theme and a CMS and throwing images in. It's really redefining yourself as a photographer. This is very important. It's important to me. It should be important to you, and I'm sure it is. And, I, you know, what I want to do is, is intersperse some more of these kind of photographer documentaries that I've done before um, and revisit those and do some new ones now like we did today because I think that that kind of inspiration and, uh, you know, trying to draw from these new ideas is really beneficial for actually yourself, your own work, your business, your website, whatever that is. Um, so anyway, everybody, this has once again been another episode of The Art of Photography. I will see you guys next time. Later.